we can have a chat with former Matildas captain who played at four Women's World Cups, Melissa Barbieri. She's the Melbourne City goalkeeper and Bubs has been good enough to join us now. Bubs, it is so good to see you in your 26th year as a professional footballer, 26th season. What would it mean to you to bring up that century of A-League women's games? Oh, it'd be a huge honour. It'd be, um, you know, a culmination of a lot of games uh, played, you know, as a goalkeeper, you don't get to say that you get to start everyone and you certainly don't get to come on, um, you know, in as many as you'd like. So um, having the 100 is a really important uh, feat, especially I already probably have over 100, uh, but nobody's counting the NSL games uh, back in the day. It's only W League games, so... This is like the FIFA stats up against Brazil's home <laughs> stats all over again. Bubs, we cannot wait to celebrate officially with you when that happens very soon. We want to look ahead to the Melbourne Derby tomorrow as well for your side up against Melbourne victory. How spicy is that contest? How spicy does it remain? Oh, it's, it's always the biggest battle on uh, the calendar. I mean, we do have uh, another rival now with Western United, but it certainly is the biggest bash on the calendar. Whenever we get the fixtures out, we always look for those ones that, you know, we're ready and able to get into it um, when that time comes. And we know the fans are going to be out in force. It's um, It's been a tumultuous time for our fans um, out there lately. So we always want to just put on a good show, make them feel um, like they're important and they're supported by us. And, and the best way we can do that is to play well and, and get the win. Bubs, thanks so much for joining us. Um, I'm curious to understand, how do you, uh, as a legend goalkeeper yourself, assess the quality of goalkeeping across our league at the moment? Are we at the right place? Uh, do we need to do more? What's your take on the quality of goalkeeping across the Liberty A-League? Uh, I'm going to have to put it in the other court here, Gracie. Um, I'm going to ask, how good are the goalkeeping coaches at each of the teams? So for me... Um, a lot of the mistakes that are happening in the goalkeeping realm, the fact that we have so many international goalkeepers coming from overseas, um, you know, what are we doing in terms of coaching? How are we getting uh, the girls up to scratch? What feedback are they getting game in, game out? Because some of the times you kind of think, um, you know, they're not being taught, they're not being told what to do, they're not being reviewed. I mean, I do countless review sessions of every game of every training session, um, and that's why my goalkeeper coach is, you know, one of the, you know, Australian goalkeeper coaches. So it's it's just up to what what resources are being given to goalkeepers. I, I know that a lot of the mistakes that are happening um, are just down to experience, um, but also the ones that are making uh, mistakes are also very experienced goalkeepers. So that just says to me that there's something going wrong in terms of the feedback and and what they need to be doing to, to make those saves. Mm, no, it's a, it's a really good point. And I guess speaking of coaching then, if you were the Matildas coach, who would be your your Matildas goalkeeping picks at the moment based on current form alone? Oh, my three goalkeepers that yeah. are playing in European football. That, that's it. At the end of the day, it's about... Um, you know, where, where are they playing? Even if they're not playing, what kind of uh, environment are they in? Champions League football, um, you know, that's the league that I want my national team goal, goalkeepers to be playing in. Bubs, thank you so much for joining us. So my question is around the up and coming World Cup. Obviously, it's so exciting that we have a Women's World Cup on Australian soil and every episode of Dub Zone, we're always talking, cute cat, by the way, walking around in the back. <laughs> That was that was my Doberman. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> same, same. Yeah, they're, they're pretty similar, aren't they? Um, yes, hopefully we'll get similar. another another shot of that and then I'll be reminded that I said something completely ridiculous. Um, oh, oh, there we go. Oh. Nothing like a cat whatsoever. <laughs> wow. I, I, that actually happened. Uh, Matilda's watch. Goalkeepers aside, are there any young guns that you think should be considered for this next World Cup? Um, in terms of goalkeepers? Doesn't have to be goalkeepers. Just any any younger players that you've noticed really standing out in this season in particular? Well, I'm kind of biased um, in, in biased. my selection. I get to, yeah, 
I get, um, you know, Holly McNamara is coming back from an ACL injury. She's looking really sharp in training. It's not long till she's back. Um, then you've got, you know, players uh, from Sydney FC. I don't mind, um, you know, Hunter, uh, Nash for Melbourne Victory, also good quality player. Um, and then the likes of, you know, Cheka, Chinema. I could name a few yeah, in, in my awesome. team especially. And speaking of your team, okay. Bubs, and oh, you were talking about the coaching there. I wanted to ask you about uh, the new coach, Dario, because I've been so impressed with what I saw on your very access all areas and the way he was coaching the team, the dynamic that he enjoyed with you. But what's it been like as he's got used now to not winning every week? Because there's been some challenging results there. So has the messaging changed or have the uh, has he developed before your eyes as a coach? Because obviously you've played for so many and been one yourself. I guess you know the challenges that it's all about. Um. No, Dario is consistent. I mean, Dario and Rado are pretty much cut from the same cloth in terms of football's philosophy. Um, There was a reason why uh, the club was really confident in taking over, um, having uh, Dario take over from Rado and then Rado stepping up to, you know, the senior men's team. Um, They're all very much cut from the same cloth uh, in terms of dynamics and, and how they go about getting the best out of their players. You know, there's definitely no yelling, no screaming. Um, you know, maybe a little bit annoyed that we, we go away from our football philosophy sometimes um, and that we tend to, you know, if, if, if we aren't motivated to get the job done by ourselves, there's really not much he can do about it. So he tries to get us to um, refocus on our principles and, and that's how we get the job done because, you know, we put a lot of faith in, in the way that we play and. We know that we play a brand of football that we can, that can be, um, you know, sh- stressful. Um, it's uncomfortable for a lot of players to, to play such, um, you know, uh, possession-based football, which means that you can come under a lot of scrutiny and a lot of pressure. Um, and and I've, I've just really uh, loved the way how Dario has uh, – ha- he hasn't changed in, in terms of uh, what, what's been happening. He probably did get a bit upset of us because of our effort levels. Uh, but uh, other than that, it's, um, it's, it's business as usual. And before going into this derby, the win against Adelaide midweek was so impressive because it was a slow burn. There, there wasn't a great deal being created at either end of the pitch. And then you had the quality to execute those two late chances. You leave with a 3-0 instead of a 1-0. How much confidence does that give the team going into the derby that even on a day where you have to be patient doesn't really matter who it is. You've got players that are coming off the bench that can score goals, that can give your attack a new dimension, but also that you are able to stay engaged in, in what must I imagine have been quite a grind of a game, given that it was largely a midfield battle for so much of it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's important to, to realise that the game against uh, Western Sydney Wanderers, we weren't patient. So we recognise that, you know, we need to be, um, you know, confident in the way that we build up and that, you're not going to score every 10 minutes in every game. You're not going to score four bangers. You're not going to score five. Um, you're not going to come away with all those uh, wins, especially as the games start to bank up. I mean, you know, we had probably seven top performances and then we kind of fell off the bandwagon a little bit, but we got back on it against Adelaide. And it's about, um, you know, knowing our strengths and that sometimes uh, teams – will come out and they will try and battle us. And to be fair, everybody plays their best game against Melbourne City. I mean, every time we step onto the park, sometimes I think when I'm watching the dub zone and I can see the games being played, I think they would never have done that against us because they're always <laughs> such uh, they're so on their game. Whenever they play against us, they would never accidentally kick it into their goal or it would never ricochet off someone else, one of our girls' faces and go in. We always have to really strive and, and it really have to, score some spectacular goals um you know no no real luck comes our way in terms of that that sort of (laughs) caper bubs it is so good to chat with you thank you so much for joining us ahead of the melbourne derby tomorrow i reckon both teams will well and truly be on their game for that one enjoy the game and we cannot wait to see you bring up that century and join us again on dub zone soon no worries thanks guys 